Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be working through questions 16 to 20 of the Intermediate Maths Challenge from 2021. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution, there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below. You can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So I do really think that's the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, but of course if you'd rather watch the uh, solutions here on YouTube, you're also uh, very well welcome. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps me get this content out there. Otherwise, we will uh, get on with the questions now. Question 16, we've got a semicircle drawn on each side of a square as shown. The square has side length 2 pi, and we want to know what the area of the resulting shape is here. I've just made a slightly bigger copy of the diagram to look at. Uh, so, right, the area of the square is uh, pretty straightforward, right? I just do 2 pi uh, times 2 pi, and that's 4 pi squared. And for a circle, we know the formula that the area is equal to pi r squared. Uh, so each of these semicircles is equal. So if I've got four of them, in total I've got two circles. Uh, so do I know the radius of those circles? Well, yes, because the radius of one of these circles is just half the side length of the square, so it's just pi. Uh, so actually these circles here are pi times uh, pi squared, which is uh, pi cubed. So the total area here is the square, which is 4 pi squared, and two full circles, or four semicircles. Uh, so that gives me 2 pi cubed. Now, to get the final answer here, we can see they've just factorized them. So factorizing here is just the same uh, as uh, with pi here as if it was with x to get the final answer. So I can see a common factor of a pi squared, and there's a common factor of a 2. Um, 2 pi squared times 2 would be 4 pi squared and 2 pi squared times pi would give us 2 pi cubed, so that's 2 pi squared times 2 plus pi, and uh, that's the same thing here as 2 pi squared times pi plus 2, which is the answer here, E. In question 17, we've got a rectangle PQRS, and we are told things about the side lengths, so I should uh, certainly uh, try to draw a diagram of this. Uh, now it says uh, PQ is the shorter side, so let's label it like this, PQ are uh, s, we always label the sides in order like that. Uh, so this side is length 2, this side is length 4, and we've got points t and u inside the rectangle so that pqt and rsu are equilateral triangles. So we're going to have them coming in something like this. I'm just going to do this approximately. Um, and uh, these aren't going to meet, okay, because uh, this, length, this side length is 4, and all of these side lengths are going to be 2. Again, I'm not trying to draw this to scale at all, um, but certainly they're not going to be uh, long enough to meet here. So uh, what can we do? We want to work out the area of quadrilateral QRUT. Okay, so they're the points T and U. Uh, so I want this the area of this quadrilateral here. Two approaches we can take. Um, we can either say, oh, well, it's a trapezium, right, uh, QRUT, so we can use the formula for the area of a trapezium, half uh, A plus B times H here, where this would be, you know, A, this would be B, and the height would be just the height that takes us up to here. Um, and that height, of course, is going to be 1, because it's a half of 2. Uh, but we'd need to work out A, uh, which we can do. Um, alternatively, we could say We've got two, two identical trapeziums and two identical triangles. So if I took the area of the rectangle and I subtract the area of the triangles, I'll end up with two trapeziums. So I could just half that to get the area of one trapezium. So we'll do that both ways. The maths turns out to be very similar. The real thing we need to do, though, is to work out this length, um, either this length A or the area of the triangle. And we can do that by splitting the um, triangle here uh, in two. In the full course, we do a lot more work on uh, getting these uh, lengths from particular types uh, of triangles and talk about uh, what we need in terms of the um, trigonometry for the Intermediate Math Challenge. Uh, for here we'll so do take a look at the full course Go for Gold and the Intermediate Math Challenge if you haven't already. And uh, here we've got a right angle triangle, we've got the hypotenuse is 1 
and this side length is, it, it, sorry, the hypotenuse is two and this side length is one. So we can just apply Pythagoras theorem here uh, to say that, you know, one squared plus uh, x squared is two squared. So x squared is four minus one, which is three. So that side length would be the square root of three. And we've got an identical situation on the other side here. So if the whole length of this uh, rectangle is four, then that side a would be four minus two lots of root three. And then we can just use this uh, formula for the area of the trapezium to say uh, the area will be a half times four minus two root three. And then I can add on the b, which is four, uh, multiply by h, which is times by one, so I don't need to write anything here. So I've got a half of eight minus two root three. And so the answer here is just four minus root three, which is d. As I said, you could also just say, oh, if you look at this equilateral triangle, once you've got the height here is root three, and we can take this one as the base of two, then the area is just a half base times height, half times two times root three, which is root three. So like the area of uh, these two, um, the area of these two uh, trapezia combined would be the area of the rectangle, which would be, um, which would be eight. Let me just clear a little bit of space here. Uh, which would be eight minus those two triangles, which is two root three, that would leave us with those two. And so to get just one of the trapezium, because they're identical, I can just take a half of it. And I've got exactly the same calculation as we had here. And we end up with four minus root three in exactly the same way. So either way, it's fine then. Question 18, which of these is closer in size to one? So let's just write these out a little bit more, make sure we understand what these recurring decimals mean. So this one will be 0.95 9595, five, five, etc. This one's going to be 1.050505, uh, etc. This one's going to be 0 0.960960. 0 this one's going to be 1.040040. 0 and this final one is going to be 0 0.955555, like that. So we want to know which of these is closest to one. So let's look at the ones that are bigger than uh, one first. Well, we can clearly see out of B and D. That, D, that B is further from one than D is because it's bigger than one and it's larger. So we're not gonna say the answer is B. Out of the ones that are uh, smaller than one, uh, now the closest one, well, this one's 0 0.95, this one's 0 0.96, this one's 0 0.5 again. So actually the closest one to one from underneath is clearly uh, this one here, 0 0.960960. So, um, the race now is just between C and D, which one of these is uh, closer? Well, D is one plus 0 0.04 plus, you know, whatever else uh, that I get here. Whereas C is one minus 0 0.04 and then plus 0 0.0960. So in C, I go 0 0.04 away from one and then adding something back on pulls me a bit closer to one. Whereas in D, I'm adding on 0 0.04, uh, and then I'm adding on something that takes me further away from one. So C is closer than 0 0.04 to one, whereas D is further away than 0 0.04 to one. So we can rule out D, and then the answer here is C. The diagram shows two overlapping rectangles, each measuring P by Q. The area of the overlap is exactly one quarter of the total area of the figure. And then we want to know what's the ratio of P to Q. So uh, don't get too far ahead of yourself in this question. Just do it one step at a time. Let's just write down all of the relevant areas. So firstly, this square in the middle is clearly uh, area Q squared, right? This length is Q and it's a uh, it's a uh, an overlapping um, uh, square here because if that's Q, that's also Q, they're identical rectangles. Um, each of the individual rectangles has area P times Q, right? So if I took the total area, by doing like this rectangle plus this rectangle, uh, I would over count by this square here, right? So I'd have counted that bit twice. So the total area of the figure is 2PQ minus Q squared. So the area of the overlap, which is Q squared, is equal to exactly one quarter of this total area. And that gives me this equation that relates Q and P. If I multiply both sides by four, I get four Q squared is equal to 2PQ minus q squared. So I can add q squared to both sides to get 5q squared is equal to 2p uh, times q. Uh, and if we divide by q, um, assuming as we must that q is not zero, then 5q 
is going to be equal to 2p. You can kind of see the 5 and the 2 in the answer here. Now I'm looking at the answers. You can probably convince yourself that the ratio is 5 to 2, and, and that's exactly right. If 5 times q is 2, two times p, that's exactly what it means for it to be in the ratio, uh, you know, for, for, for p and q here to be in the ratio 5 to 2. Um, if you're not convinced with converting to the ratio, some people might like to write something like q is equal to 2 fifths p, and then you could see if I did the ratio of p to p to q, if p is 1, then q is 2 fifths of that, and then multiplying both sides by 5, you get 5 to 2. No need to do that, and just know that some people like to think about it like that. Once you see the 5 and the 2 here, we can say that the answer is a. Two straight lines have equations y equals px plus 4 and py equals qx minus 7, where p and q are constants, and we're told the lines meet at the point 3, 1, and we want to work out the value of q. If you don't overthink this question, and you get the first step right, it's actually quite easy. Um, but it's easy to get bogged down by trying to think about what these lines actually look like and trying to draw them or something. The only idea we want to use here is that if uh, the line passes through a point that's got these coordinates, 3, 1, then when I plug the x and the y coordinates as x equals 3 and y equals 1 into their equations, uh, that that must work. So the fact that 3, 1 is on this first line, y is equal to px plus 4. Well, if I put in x equals 3, that will give me 3p plus 4, and then y equals 1 here. I'll get an equation that will just tell me what p is straight away. 1 equals 3p plus 4. So that's minus 3 equals 3p, and so p is equal to minus 1. Now, if I do the same with the other equation, py equals qx minus 7, well, y is 1 here, so p times 1 is p. I've got q times x, q times 3, so that's 3q uh, minus 7. We already know that p is minus 1 now, so I've got minus 1 equals 3q minus 7. Add 7 to each side, I get 6 equals 3q, and divide by 3, and I get q is equal to 2. So actually, if you make sure you keep this a totally algebraic question, just using that idea that um, you know the, uh, the graph of an equation is just the set of all of the points um, that satisfy the equation, whose coordinates satisfy the equation, substitute the coordinates into the equations. Um, they're on both lines, so uh, that gives us P and Q directly here. So we've got Q equals 2, and the answer is uh, B. So I really hope that was useful. Don't forget, I think the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge is to click below and take my totally free online course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more, not just with the solutions, but also with video hints to help you get started. So do check that out if you haven't already and share it with your friends. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps me get the content out there and I will see you soon.